Let's go. go. Turn up the volume. The volume. From the basement of the Empire State. This is the Basement Surge. Three, two, two. Welcome back to the Basement Surge, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me this week. I like, I know I say this every week, but I have a special episode this week for you guys because I literally have my first in studio guest here at the basement, Chris from Podtastic Audio. Yo, what's happening? How are you doing? <laughs> Thanks for the flight all over here, man. I appreciate it. This you, is great. You, no problem, man. I mean, you know, w w the red carpet, you know. It was red carpet. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank Straight you. to the studio, you know. It we, was. Hey, thanks for bringing your limo driver and picking me up. I appreciate that. <laughs> that was great, man. <laughs> we're, green room. We hooked you up, man. You That's guys it. did. This is great. In a, I did my first time actually being in a basement, <laughs> like ever. You know, I always imagine I, every basement I always imagine is from like Silence of the Lambs, and that's kind of the basement I just assumed it was like that in here, you know. But it's, it's way better than than uh, uh, yeah. the hole, you know, and uh, lotion in the basket and all that stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. This is Brooklyn. Wow, I'm not I'm not actually coming to you via Streamyard. This is actually I'm actually here, right, in your place. Yes, he is actually here in the basement studio. Um, like the Chris Smith from Podtastic Audio. Yes. He uh he is the the very first in studio guest here at the Basement Surge and like I I I I couldn't be happier. I, re I really couldn't because he's such a great guy. He runs such a great show. Like Thanks, man. Yeah. <sighs> All right. So, wait. Before we get into this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, if you're listening to us over in a podcast listening app, or if you're listening to us, if you're watching us over on YouTube, do me a favor, hit that follow button, hit that plus button, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, hit whatever button you got to hit to make sure you get notified of fresh episodes of the basement surge. <sighs> okay. All right. I got that out of the way, Chris. Yeah, sorry. of course. They, <laughs> you know, you got to tell them to subscribe because if they don't know, yeah. they're not just going to watch it and then be on to the next thing they're doing. And if you see some videos that look interesting to the right column, don't worry about those. Don't yeah. even click on those. No. I know they look tempting. That's it. They do. Is yeah. it a baking show? Is it a car show? Is it maybe a new Marvel show? No, no, don't worry about that stuff. Stay right here. <laughs> Back to you, John. Wow. You know, Chris, I, I think I'm going to hire you as my new co-host. Like, you're amazing. <laughs> well, I try. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, Chris, you flew in from San Diego, California. Yeah, just to be here. You just to be <laughs> Just to All be All over here. Yeah. Wow, this is New York City. Man. Oh, man. Like, I, I, I still can't believe you're here. I know. The funny thing is, is the last week or earlier this week, yeah. I was in Hawaii. <laughs> I was in Hawaii. I was in. I was in Honolulu. The basement, the basement Beach. surge did not fund that. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My credit card is still funding that. <laughs> right. right. Or credit cards, I should say. Yeah. And uh, we were in Hawaii uh, a week ago. It was this week. Flew back home to San Diego for only two days worth of work, and then hopped in a plane and flew out here to New York City, JFK. JFK, yeah. J JFK, yeah. yeah. Wow. Like, you have been one busy guy. You're telling me, man. Like, after this trip is over and I get back to town Monday or Sunday, yeah. Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday, whatever day it is, <laughs> I fly back home. I got to go back to the daily grind, back to work. And um, I don't see another vacation until October. Oh. And I don't think I'm, this is going to be like a staycation. Like, these are like our official, we're done traveling vacations for, right. for a while. If I never see, never see another airplane again, I'm fine. I think I'm good for a while. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's like a five and a half hour flight over here. And we, we were packed like sardines. I had the middle seat, Christine next to the window, and this little college girl was next to me writing some book report or something. And every time I had to go to use the restroom, we all had to get out and go to the thing and all mm. that. And every time I'm on the airplane and I have to use the restroom, I, I'm afraid I'm going to hit like turbulence or something when I'm taking a leak. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be like like all over the mirror, <laughs> you know, all over the sink. And, and so so I do that. And um, But it's always good to walk around. I get up, even if I have to use the restroom, I'll get up in the plane and like walk up and down the aisle, just kind of like stretch your legs. Because you're yeah. like in that cramped like position for five sure. hours. It's it's brutal, but um, 
but it but it was fun. We landed, you know, and took a taxi ride. And what is with New York? Everybody drives a taxi, or is it an Uber or a bike cab? They are not from here. No, no, nobody is from New York. I mean, like not from the, not from America. They're like all all foreigners. Yeah, yeah. And you have to like talk to them. Like, I told him Christine. So he says, "Hey, tell that guy we want to go to the Empire State Building." I go tell the guy. And he's like, I, "I said, Christine, I don't think he understands my language. I, I think <laughs> I don't think it's what I'm talking about." So. <laughs> We told the guy, and eventually, I think she, I think she had to do a translator app or something. I don't know. <laughs> tell the guy, and eventually, or no, wow, yeah, tell, tell the guy the ad- bad? Wait, tell the guy the address. He's like, "Where's the address?" I said, "You live here in this. Like, we're not from here. You live here. You should know where the Empire State Building is." Yeah. I mean, I think it's like a common. I think they put it in like first grade literature, like when you. Oh well, sure. I mean, like I, I think if you're if you're a taxi driver or an Uber driver in New York City, like you have to know where all of the landmarks are. This way, you can just go there whenever you right. need to. Yeah, you know? we, we type the address in there, into his phone. I remember, and then. There was an issue with the payment because he says he took like, what do you say? It was Cash App or Zelle or some goofy thing or whatever. So Christine had to like download the app, you know, and try to figure uh. out how to pay the guy or whatever. And then she eventually, I think she got cash out of her wallet. So here's his cash, and and there we go. But we've been Ubering it. We did the um, the tour bus, you know, we did that and um, doing the taxi thing and the and then of course the. Um, the pedicab thing. We had those in San Diego too, the pedicab things in downtown. Oh, do I, I've never taken one before. I just figured they're for like, you know, tourists or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are. They are. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, do we have a downtown in San Diego too? Downtown San Diego does remind me a lot of downtown Manhattan and stuff. Okay. But we do have one-way streets too. And one day, I remember I was working for a, um, I was delivering auto parts for Napa Auto Parts and I was mm-hmm. down there and I went, I was going wrong way on the one way. <laughs> Because I was at a light, and I'm like at the light. I'm looking like, why is that guy facing me? <laughs> oh like, no! So I like pulled into like a parking lot, and, like did a thing, like you know whatever. But yeah, but you, were you driving like an 18 wheeler? No, no, no. It was like a pickup truck or whatever. Oh okay. yeah, 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 yeah. It was like a pickup truck, but um, <clears throat> but yeah, it was it was uh, it's very similar in a lot of ways. I, yeah. th- I think the streets in downtown San Diego are a little wider. I think they're four lanes across. I think three. Yeah. Three. Yeah, we're only one. <laughs> One or two in some spots, yeah. yeah. But um, uh, all right, so uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Chris is from Podtastic Audio, which is run straight out of San Diego, California. That's right. Okay, uh, he's come from thousands of miles away. Almost 3,000 miles. 3,000 miles away to be here in the studio to talk to us about what he thinks about New York. Yes. You know, and... Uh, yeah, it's it's funny because you've been here a couple of days now. Yes, it's my second second full day. Second full day, and yeah. Serge has put you up in a nice hotel. Yeah, over Trump a- Tower. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Trump Tower itself. No, we're staying at um, the Hilton <clears throat> in uh, Times Square. Yeah, which we it was kind of funny. We got off the taxi and like the, right in front of the place. I was like, where? is the front door because it was kind of sketchy and I'm like there's all these guys hanging out smoking and just kind of like all these people all these shady characters are right by the front door hanging out and I'm like where's the front door to the place I find the door and you walk in and you're like okay it's not like your typical hotel but you walk in there's a the lobby and like right. a big you know chandelier and everything you walk in this like hallway thing with a bellman and a desk and then elevators to the right of him and he's like, he's checking in. Yeah, you go to the elevator. It's like, elevator? So we go to the elevator, hit the uh, button for the lobby. I think it's a lobby. Yeah, it must be. And then we go up to there, and that's where the fancy check-in. and the. Oh, I was going to say, this isn't the kind of hotel Serge paid for. Like, you know, we, uh, yeah. we thought it was like a five-star hotel that, oh, you know, well, you got the the, oh. the banquet breakfast in the morning. Oh, let me tell you and- about the breakfast, dude. Just like, check us out. <laughs> so yesterday, we get down, and we're going to go down there to check out like we're hungry, you know, we get something to eat, whatever. And and it was just before cutoff or was cut off for their breakfast. It was 11 a.m. Yeah. And we go down there and they had the standard like continental like buffet style breakfast that most of these hotels have. Right. Because they stayed at one in Miami, Hilton, Miami. <clears throat> they had a free breakfast in Miami. So I go down there. I peek in the little buffet. I'm looking around. I'm like, so Christine's like, it's anything you like? I'm like, ah, it's your basic buffet. It's got the waffle thing, got the pancake thing, got the scrambled egg powder they make, you know, and they got a couple of bacon and stuff. Yeah. Ah, it's basic, whatever. Well, do you want it? I was like, ah, I don't know. I mean, and she's like, I'm like, well, maybe I will. And then she says, it's $45. I'm like, what? Oh my goodness. $45 for that? I thought it was, I thought that it was free. It looked free, you know? <laughs> 
I thought it was free. It's supposed to be free. I mean, well, you rent looked, the room. It looked, it looked like a free, like it looked like a, literally a free breakfast, like a free yeah. breakfast, you know? So I thought it was. And I was like, nope, never mind. But wow. then next door was Applebee's and they had breakfast. They were serving breakfast at Applebee's and we go down like 15 there. bucks. It, it was, it was, it was. <laughs> and I'm looking through the menu and I see the breakfast burrito. Right. And I'm like, eh, how hard can that be? <laughs> oh no. So then I get the breakfast burrito, right? And I'm like, Eh, it's edible because I'm hungry, but it, but it's not no gourmet or nothing. <laughs> um, because it was like a little bit of egg, and then the rest it was like tomatoes and onions and just like all this other stuff. Yeah, and a little bit of actual like you know. So I'm like, oh, you're from California. Like, of, that, that, that's where they too. do the breakfast burrito. Oh yeah, they yeah. put avocado in there, and um, it's funny. I was, while I was sitting at Applebee's, there was a big breakfast joint called the Broken Yolk in San Diego, and there there's one in Florida too. They kind of branching out. And I was like, well, maybe there's one in Manhattan. Let me look it up. Mm-hmm. I'm looking. No, no, no such luck. It's not in Manhattan, but because they do a breakfast burrito, they do a big. It's like it's like big, and it's like almost I can't eat the whole thing. Kind of big. Really. And um, wow. It kind of reminded me of that. I was like, oh, man, I was one over there, you know, and uh, no such luck. But but we had second day here. We did a lot yesterday. We did the tour of the Central Park. We walked around there, <laughs> took all the pictures. This guy is, like, sending me pictures all day, yes. right, of what he's doing in New York City, like, the first day he's there. Um, well, in all fairness, you had landed, like, late at night. Like 10, yeah. 30, 11 o'clock. Yes, and then it was no joke. You said it was going to take forever to get to our hotel. It did because yeah. there was, I guess, they got construction where right. it's down to one lane, leaving JFK or some nuts like that. Yeah. But while we're in the taxi cab, which I hated that ride too because um, it had like those like like placards or like the guy's information like right in front of my space. I couldn't <laughs> right. ever see I couldn't see around it to see where we're going. Yeah. And, and You're not supposed had, to. Yeah, so yeah. I'm looking at the window, and it's kind of drizzling, and I'm looking at the different houses. Oh, that's kind of neat, houses and stuff. And I'm looking around, and it's kind of cool. So while we're in traffic, I'm like, I always, I always, every time I go somewhere new, I always curious what the real estate is. Sure. So I pull up the phone, like Zillow or, or, or Realtor or whatever, and I'm like, look in the area, see what these houses go for and what they sell for and things. And I'm like, oh, look at this place. It's cute. It's pretty cute. And, uh, and I saw the gas stations. I think you guys got lucky out here. $3 a gallon? What a deal. It's more expensive in San Diego. It's like four seventy five dollars. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But I've been putting E eighty five in my truck to save some money. But, okay. But you lose you lose, you lose um what do you call it? You lose gas mileage with it. Mm-hmm. Um. But but it's like racing gas, get more power, like fifty more horsepower. I don't know about the power, you know. So um, more power, like more power, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like but, home uh, improvement, Tim Taylor. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They say it has like fifty more horsepower to my truck. I'm like hell yeah, let's do this. You know. Um. <laughs> But uh, but anyways, yeah. So so we got we got checked in, and then and then we immediately I was hungry. And I wanted to get some pizza. We want to go down Times Square, walking around the thing, and see all everybody's. It's like one a.m. Everybody's out. Yeah. And down by Times Square, it's a whole a city per- that never sleeps, dude. You, well, you know what you say that. It's funny you say that. <laughs> you know what it reminded me of. It totally reminded me. I was telling Christine. It reminds me of Las Vegas. Yeah. At night, like same deal. T- you know, <laughs> during the summer, I like, well. Outside of COVID, when it's normal time, like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., mm. walking down the strip, it's the same deal. All these lights, just like the lights they have at Times Square, just like the strip, they've got the same deal. They got the big tall. Really? Um, you know, I've yeah. never been to Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. There's a, sp- a couple of places in Vegas, like the places we usually go are like by the Paris and Bellagio and all those kind of spots. Yeah. There's like the downtown area, which I've never been to, which has that big sky. Uh, br- um, canopy it lights up the fremont street thing okay i've never been there i heard it's great but it's in the sketchy part of town so <laughs> i just stay i just stay where <laughs> i just stay where, where the where the big hits are at the block right, you know, right, right. caesar's palace like all that spot and there's like every casino has got like the big billboards on the side kind of like yeah. they have here with the big well the movies are coming out but they'll have like donnie mm-hmm. marie's got a big thing and they've got like donnie and marie. like who was, who was the tiger guys and, and the uh mirage and the tiger guys were there and then um the guys at the rio was it penn and teller they got right. a big banner and then they, of course they got the big the big actual screens that have like they're just showing like all the different cool things you know like eat here for this money or we got a deal here or eat play or stay or whatever or the yeah. showgirls or the different shows like the 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 jubilee show is big the, the um circus soleil is huge like every hotel has got a circus soleil there and they got the big banner so it kind of reminded me of that we're walking through here what about celine dion yes she's got, she, i'm <laughs> sure she's got a banner there too well she did until she got hurt or something but yeah. um jerry steinfield of course got his thing and stuff but um it kind of reminded me of that and tijuana 
because <laughs> it reminded me of both. <laughs> it walked like downtown. T- I used to go to Tijuana a lot. Downtown yeah. Tijuana, late, late, you know, and stuff too. Kind of reminded me of that with the crowded streets, but walking and okay. Um, it kind of reminded me a little of both. I was told Christine, it reminded me of Tijuana. She said, Those are like Mexico. Tijuana. Yes, Tijuana, Mexico. <laughs> Tijuana, Mexico. Yeah, it did. But the difference is, okay, now I got a question. It, yeah. Can you guys drink on the streets in New York or no? No, we're not allowed. Like if uh, okay. if I go to the store to buy a beer like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be okay. in a bag. has to be in a bag. Okay. Now, in Vegas, you can drink those down the street, walking down the street. You used to be able to take them in a cab with you. Really? Open ball in the cab. Some cab, cab wow. drivers would be like cool about it. Like, hey, come on in, whatever. You drink a beer, walk into the cab, still drink the beer, walk down. Because uh, I was telling Christine, I don't notice any of those. In Vegas, they have the big tall yard drinks. They're like plastic with like this big, mm-hmm. with a fat bottom and a tall top. Yes. And they the big straw. straw. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, right, yes. Right. We've had those in Vegas. And um, everybody's walking around with those things on a hot day like today, and that's yeah. why that's what kind of reminded me of Vegas without the drinks. Okay, the, that area there. So then we find a pizza place. Actually, I look at my phone. I'm like, where's the nearest pizza place? I'm going at my phone, and for some reason, I don't have signal down there. I don't know what's the buildings or whatnot. So my signal is like choppy and spotty. I think it's over here. Huh. It says take a ride in this street. I'm like, what street are we on? And I think we're on the right way. And we finally went. Finally found this pizza place. It was called I forget what it's called. Times Square Pizza or New York? P- I don't know something pizza. It was busy. People were in there ordering. How like, much? How much did you pay for that slice of pizza? Five dollars. Everything said five dollars a slice on the on the. Is that, is that the going rate? I don't know. I I that's actually pretty expensive. That's why I figured. Yeah, I figured that Cause, much. Because uh, over here in in Brooklyn, in the neighborhood over the bridge, you know, like uh, it's like two fifty a slice around there. Now is it a limited <clears> toppings <throat> or a limited three or two topping for that slice? No, that's just a regular cheese slice. Just a oh, so each toppings more. Yeah. So maybe it is five bucks. And if you add like four toppings. Well, what did you get? Did you get the Hawaiian pizza? <laughs> no, they did have that though. You know, you told me no one has that here. They did, they did have that. And I was like, no way. Yeah. Um, the Maui's always unbelievable, unbelievable Hawaii, by the way. Um, you, you know, you know what I can't believe? I can't believe that you literally just went on a vacation to Hawaii. Right? Yes. And then when you get back home to, to San Diego, the first thing you eat is the Hawaiian pizza from your freezer. <laughs> well, hey, my freezer's stocked with pizza. And that's what it has. Well, I usually cook it for Christina because, like, I mean, you know, I probably can crush a whole pizza by myself, but right. I, try, I try not to. But but of the frozen pizzas, that's my favorite. They're like freschetta. I don't know if you guys have them here. But yeah, freschetta, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they're my favorite because I've had the... The other ones they have there, which is like thin cardboard and crap. Those ones, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? You come out of right, the oven, right. it's like in cardboard. Yeah. Um, that's the closest to actual like real pizza you're going to get out of the freezer, I say. Um, do you guys have places that do the do the pre, pre-prep pre pizzas you can buy? They're like... What do you mean? They're pre-prep. like not... They're frozen, but they're made by actual pizza places. No. F- none, none of the pizza places around here make frozen pizza. Okay. Like well, each and every... Uh, pizzeria around here is like kind of like a family owned pizzeria and they take a lot of pride into their own sauces and you know the kind of cheeses that they put on so it's it's like you know depending on the kind of pizzeria that you go into depends like on the quality of the slice or the taste of the slice you know because you can get a different taste going from phil's which is where we ordered today from mr phil's pizzeria on new Shout out, avenue the hey phil you listen to pizza yeah <laughs> <laughs> um or you know if you go to uh tony pepperoni which is like another block away or lmb's which, which is like the square pizzas with the sauce underneath the cheese yeah it's you know? uh, kind of like a chicago style of right? yeah no well not chicago style they're, they're more uh, instead of a regular slice the, the triangle slice it's yeah, more yeah. like a square you know yeah, so yeah. it's not chicago as in deep dish hey do you guys have a little caesars out here no well we do we do, but it's not. So low, that's what like the tourists go to. It's like it's like in the bad neighborhoods. <laughs> oh, you know? like, yeah. Like, they still do that five dollar pizza they, they used to do. That was five ninety nine for. It, for- it's funny because I used to I used to have a job. I used to work with um, with the Department of Education here in New York, right? And I was a cleaner for schools, right? So I was a janitor. I was like a glorified janitor, that's right? right? And. Um, and every night on my break, I used to work the night shifts. Every night on my break, I'd go and uh, order a slice of pizza. I'd get like three slices from this place by the school. And 
I was in the city. I was in in the heart of Chinatown, and in uh, in the city, and um, it was like some of the best pizza you'd ever eat. And I was shocked. You know why? It was like a dollar a slice. Really? A dollar a slice. And they promoted it like that. They sold dollar slices. Now, that for just a basic cheese or the other? Basic cheese, so, basic slice, just a regular slice of pizza. If, you, if you're hungry and that's what you want. Of course. A dollar. Of course. You know, and uh, and it, it was awesome. I'd get like three slices, you know. Have you and, had toppings? Is it more? Yeah, sure, of course. Okay, you know, so it'd the be dollars, like fifty cents so or a dollar dollars, more. Dollar is just your basic. Dollar is a basic slice. Now, I just, I just think it's like sacrilegious to order just a like cheese pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to have something on it. <laughs> you know. Well, you're you're kind of a pizza snob in a way because you used to work for a pizzeria. That's right, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> My first job out of high school was doing pizza delivery. Right. And so when we were doing so del- you know your pizza. Yeah, can I tell you I'm the worst pizza mistake I ever made? What? Oh God! I was surprised I didn't get fired for this. This is like <laughs> a little like a fireable <laughs> offense. It's so bad because I saw the lead cook do this, but he wasn't paying that much of attention to what he was doing. So, if you cook the Hawaiian pizza, pizzas with lots of vegetables on them, they do have the the water. It's in there, so when yeah. they do cook, they rise to the top, and the whole pizza is kind of flooded, right? Sure. With kind of grease and, and and waters and stuff. So he took paper towels and he would like dab the pizza to like get the, the water. So right. so you know I, I was like I was being helpful and all you know, and so I'm like, well, no deliveries being made instead of making pizza boxes. I'm like, I'll help out. I, so what I grab. What I you know, I grabbed something to uh, dab the you know what I grabbed the rag they oh, used to wipe no. the counter with. No. <laughs> I used the rag that they wiped the counter with to dab the pizza. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the the owner's son looked at me. And he's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> I'm like, oh. I'm just dabbing the pizza like the other the, the chef was doing. And he's Please like, "Please tell me they threw that that pie away." No, they sent it out. Oh no. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah, they sent it out. They, um, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I oh, mean. Oh, my goodness. You know, another thing was kind of funny. We worked there. We'd get the, the order. They'd get the phone orders. It was like triple anchovy, right? And yeah. Like, come on. No, you, you, know, you don't like anchovy? No, not triple anchovy, right? And the pizza, <laughs> for God's sake. Don't, you know, so. So they order, they, they take the order, and they always have to call it back to make yeah. sure it's not a prank call. Because at times you get prank calls, they would call in. I've done that. Yeah. So, so the guy ordered, <laughs> triple, of course, nobody picked it up, of course, right? They made it, right? It was triple anchovy. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to throw the thing in the back, and, and they throw it away. So then I'm like, you know, I'm working, I'm hungry, you know, like, oh, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it, you know? So I opened that thing up. It was like eating sand from the beach. It was like putting your mouth right in the uh. seawater and eating a, a, mouth, a mouthful of seawater sea and seaweed, what it tasted like. Mm. Spit yeah. that thing out and threw it away. But that's what they got to do. They had to call. Say, yes, I worked there for a while um, just doing the delivery. You know, it was around town, a small town I lived in. Uh, what sucked is everything, because the way the place I lived in Alpine, everything's kind of spread out. So it was like shaped kind of like a big L. Like you go up one way and you go down another way and you go out another way. Where like in some city areas, like here, everything's kind of like a grid, like a block, yeah. you know, where you can kind of get around quicker, you know. But there it's like, so far so so what i would do is i listen to music i um, talk on my cell phone i had a cell phone back in the day that was good for like after after like 9 p.m it was like <laughs> or seven or whatever it was it was free you know to talk right right so i have that talk i was talking on my phone all night long and delivering and then listening to whatever cds i had at the time and i listened to a lot of like talk show radios at night like, like shows at night like uh love line any podcasts no. Podcast went around back then. Back in the day, no. Uh, those, no. It was CDs, actual CDs, you know, and then they had the radio. Right. Um, so they had, they, had, they had the Love Line they had I listened to a lot, and they had another one, a couple of ones they had. They Love were, Line? What? That sounds really familiar. Yeah, like, you know, Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yeah. Yeah, and then they eventually uh, they fired Adam. And oh, my then, God. Like, th- yeah, that they, was in California, too? Yeah, yeah, it was in um, – well, actually, it was, that was a nationwide show, but it was in um, – K Rock. K Rock is famous for all that stuff. Right. Came out. Jimmy Kimmel was from K Rock. Um, Adam Kroll. Over K-Rock. here, K Rock was ninety two point three. Probably the same. Was it? Is there? Is there call sign K R K K R O K R K R O Q? Same thing or whatever. Yeah. But um, but yeah, they're but they actually they syndicated down in San Diego. Okay. Ninety one X. Ninety one X is a alternative station in San Diego, but they're independent. Yeah. There's a couple company owns a couple stations, but they're broadcast out of Mexico. So they have a hot in Mexico they don't give a rip about your uh, how much power they're allowed to use. So they so they use like the megawatt, whatever the biggest <laughs> antenna, you know, so you can hear it in LA almost, you know. Yeah. Um 
So it's always comes super clear. But it's funny, since they're broadcast out of Mexico, at midnight every night on the clock, they have to play the Mexican anthem. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the station required it said and, oh and, and, and they play commercials that are spanish com- they're like spanish commercials for things in mexico but in english so let's so like say uh the, the, the government of mexico welcomes you to make sure you da, 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 whatever and stuff like that yeah so but uh but yeah i just listened to that a lot when i drove wow. pizza and i did that for a while and then i knew a guy a couple guys that worked at the casino there's a, there a casino that was close to my house indian casino indian reservation casino yeah and they got me in there working there at the casino. I left the pizza place to work at the, the casino. That's when I. That's when I, I. Another stupid thing I did at the casino. Well, a couple of stupid things, but but one stupid thing I did, like I didn't know. Any, I I didn't know. You know, I go in the casino and I'm like working there. My first day on the job. Work. We worked like like uh, I was the pull pull team. So I took the cash out of the machines and put them into the the vault or whatever. Okay. So I was working with my team. Asked them first day on the job working. I'm like, hey, when do you guys close? <laughs> and they say you're 24 7 like what <laughs> you are i didn't know like i didn't right, know you right. know and and the second th- mistake i made was that when you go into the vault room there's two rooms there's like two separate doors like it was like you go into one room close the door and then you go to another room you lock that door and then you go into the actual room where they count the money and i left a bag of cash like in that first room like on the counter okay. and surveillance saw saw me like leave that's, it there it's, that's a no-no well, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, one thing they care about is their money. You ever seen the movie Casino? Yeah, well, um, maybe. I watched it on the way over on the plane. I was not thinking anything about that, but um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I just worked there for a while, and I handled like probably hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash every night. Right, eighteen-year-old me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we were talking like schemes, like how do we can get out of here with the money? Because he put it in like the he, he, we gave us like this, um, just a standard like walmart tub bucket with a lid you know and the lid had like a hole cut in the center of it and we okay. take the bags of money which would be like these clear money bags you put the cash from the machine into the thing zip it put it in the bucket and the bucket got full you wheel it to the count room and if it got too full like i had the one that one day i set the cash on the side um they take it in the count room and then you dump the bucket on their like table it's got clear that like how they can see in the ca- now, there are cameras everywhere in that room now when you when you say counting room okay is that like you know because i picture mobsters like mafia oh, guys totally, yeah. sitting totally. down like just counting money and putting it in the machines oh and- totally yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but the thing is they, they have they have the workers that work in there they have like almost trench coats on like kind of like oh so it's even more shady it's like, a, it's, like a lab, it's like lab coats they have on and they have like clear everything's clear tables so in case money falls and they can't like put on the table or nothing yeah and then they got cameras that are pointed like everywhere and then um and they do have the counting machines and they're doing the, the they, they count through the machine and they bundle them you know and they have this cart it looks like a cart for like a restaurant they have have like desserts pushing around kind of cart okay and they have just like bricks and like bricks of money just like on the cart you know and i'm like i'm like first day on the job you're like look at all that money you're like counting your head wow. but after like a couple of years working there it's like you become immune. Yeah, it's like pick up the trash or whatever. It's like right. it's like you're taking the trash out. It's, yeah. You just bag it and throw it and go. It's it's a day. It's a job. Yeah. But uh, back to the pizza story. Yeah, I love <laughs> I love pizza. I did pizza. That was my thing. I almost got fired from that. And um, but uh, doing the delivery thing it was quick money. But then I realized you're putting so many miles in your car on your truck or whatever. Sure, you had, yeah. And you got to pay for the gas. You got to pay for all that. And and I think I was making at the most maybe six hundred dollars a month total with with with. That's not a lot. With, that's with my minimum wage plus tips and stuff, maybe six hundred bucks. Yeah. And you got to pay for your own gas and everything and all. Of course, right. I was in college. I was a college kid. So, all right. So, what do you think? Like, do you think San Diego pizza is better, or do you think New York uh, pizza is better? I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Okay. You're doing. I so, you're doing. I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, like I know that you've had pizza twice. Uh, have you? Have, have you had pizza more while you're here? No, I've not. Just these two okay. times. Okay. So the two, two times. times. So yeah, you've right. had it. The first night you were here, which was like one, two o'clock in the morning. Yes. Um, which was kind of stale, old kind of pizza. Yeah. Well, they had pizza pies all laid out. Like it always reminded me of Panda Express, where they have the food already done. <laughs> and you just kind of like serve it as you go. Right. 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 Yeah. So it was kind of the same same concept, but they did put it back in the oven and reheat it. And uh, sure. Yeah. But I, I mean, it was a little. Cri- the bottom was crisp because of course put it in the oven. They, cr- yeah. they crispy it up, but it was very good. It was very very good. It had like a um, almost a peppery kind of spice to like the mozzarella and the sauce and stuff. Okay. So. so 
so so I appreciate that. And it, and it was freshly hot because right out of the oven. Right. Okay. Uh, so now the pizza that you had today from Mr. Phil's Pizzeria, um, who's not a sponsor, so don't worry about it. It was um, a <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, is the second pizza that you've ever had in Brooklyn. Okay. So actually it's the first pizza you had in Brooklyn. Yes. The yes. first, the other pizza you had I in, think I'm in having the city. Pizza. I'm having pizza tonight, by the way, too, at the, at the event, at the wedding event we're doing well, tonight. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So Christine's like, no more pizza on this whole trip. We're done doing pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, I want to try pizza and bagels, pizza and bagels. I heard, I heard, I heard you guys are, you guys are famous for both pizza yes. and bagels. I've, I've had a bagel too. So yeah, uh, they are very good. Uh, mm -hmm. They're very good. But honestly, to be honest, like the pizza today versus like a decent pizza place <clears throat> in San Diego. Yeah. Um, well, I think you're close. I think they're. Cl <laughs> <laughs> I, I think okay. It's okay. It's probably better here. Got that? No, I don't say uh, that just because you're in the basement. Okay. Uh, no, no, <laughs> the, the, the dungeon, really. Yeah, yeah. The dungeon. <laughs> but but I think that like like I love honestly I love Costco pizza. Like like the slice. Costco pe pizza. Costco pizza is my wow. absolute favorite. You can buy it by the slice. Yeah. It's like two dollars. Yeah. Pepperoni, okay, or a combination. But I get the pepperoni. Right, they pre-make them. They're 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 great. They fold like here. That that piece that they fold. They're not the thick crust crap. Right. So, <laughs> but but I actually like it. In fact, when I was working on day shift at my job every day after work, there was a Costco nearby, and I'd be hungry after work. I get off mm. like three o'clock or whatever. I go to the Costco. Yeah. And and go and get the pizza and the and the coke. And it was like literally four bucks for the, for the meal, you know, whatever. Mm. So I would go there, and I love the Costco slice of pizza. I, in fact, I was there after a lot. The other day, I was there. Getting so okay, so I think you've been in New York for what two, three days now, you know, and and you've equated New York pizza to Costco pizza. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> what can I say? But actually, the Costco grease pizza did have a lot of grease in it. I didn't notice any grease in this. See, uh, the grease is the, the best part. I didn't notice any grease. Did you notice grease in this pizza? I didn't notice any. Today's pizza? No, not really. See, that's what I'm saying. Like the Costco yeah. pizza, literally, you can like hang it, hold it up, and it's like running like a fountain. Like, really? <laughs> okay, see, that's pretty good. Chris, All right, I gotta give it up. Well, Costco. Christine does does the does the napkin tap like the one yeah. I tried in the, another place. No, the yeah. grease is the flavor. You don't take it off. Like, yeah, well, I, I, what I always, but I always fold like a taco. I always right, fold, right. fold, fold, the, fold the pizza because I heard in, in New York here, you always fold your pizza. Yeah. Because um, if you order it flat like a pancake or something, you know, it's you know nuts. You're talking, it's crazy. But I, I, that's what I like about the Costco pizza. I do fold it up like a like a taco when I right. eat it. I don't try to like because it's a big slice. It's oh, not. Good. It's it's a, it use, it use probably whatever. But the regular pizzas, I think, are nine ninety nine for. Uh, I think it's a sixteen inch. Okay. And um, but then at Costco, you have to have a Costco card. Right. But now, see, they didn't used to. They used to be able anybody who anybody who wanted or the food court could without a card. You walk up the order, you order whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But now Costco got smart because they're getting all these people coming in with no Costco cards buying all their stuff. So now you have to show your card. You have to scan your scan your card first before you can order. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, Costco is great. I go to I go to Costco. My ex wife still works at Costco and um, I got my TV at Costco my computer no not computer well there's nothing wrong with Costco I mean I shop there for food all the time so oh yeah um, but I mean as far as like the rest of New York City goes like wh what do you think like you, the last time you had told me the last time you were here was when you were 13 years old yeah on a, on a field trip from school it was a school <laughs> field trip we did the um uh, my, my, my older son's gonna my, my son's gonna do that next year. Yeah, uh, they do a big school field trip. It's eighth grade, so probably thir I think thirteen then. So we went to like Washington, Virginia, New York. Saw the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Saw the Empire State Building. All that stuff. But if you're in a big tour group with all the other kids and you're doing the thing, that's the last time I was here. I thought it was I thought New York of all the places on that tour was like the best place. Other than like I think I think Washington was cool because you got to see like kind of like. You know the Declaration of Independence and and, and all that kind of stuff, which is kind of cool. And that's okay. the thing. Oh, another thing too. This place got so much history. This town, yeah. like, like as I walk around, I love the architecture of all the different buildings and the variety of buildings. Yes. And like, and like I see smaller buildings and I see big ones. Like, that's a new one. That's an old one. And I wonder how old is that building? It's funny you say that because you know Heather and I were in the city last week. You know, and as we were walking through the streets, you know, like we were looking at all the skyscrapers because she doesn't go there often you know so she she's looking up she's looking you know at all the, the fanciness or whatever and and i point out this old ass looking building okay that looked like it was built in like 1920 it was beautiful 
you know, compared like to the sky. And, and there was a skyscraper right next to it. Right. You know, of course, yeah. And like, I think it was on like fifth or, or sixth Avenue or something like that. But you know, it, it was like, it was the old with the new, you know, and, and I love that. I, I love that about the city. I love the history about the city, you know, and, and walking around New York city, you can see things like that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got to ask you about the um, streets because some streets have like these bricks. They're not like cobblestone. Yes. Now are those original or are they re yes. redone? No. Original. Oh, those are original. From like the 1600s. That's the way all the streets were in New York City. That's what I heard. I, I did it. I watched the <clears throat> documentary on the subway and all that yeah. stuff. How they redig it out and put all that stuff. But I was wondering if some of those. So if any street you see, it's cobblestone. Is it original? Original. It's original. From like 1800s. Original. No way. I was telling Christine, I said, you can tell by the brickwork. Because yeah. modern brickwork looks different than than whatever they were using back yeah, then. Yeah, and not for nothing, it doesn't hold up to the standards. Because it's like that old cobblestone that you see Yeah, yeah, is holding up through the years. You know, and the new bricks, the new stucco, whatever they're putting in the streets or in the buildings, you know, it's not it's not really holding up. Or the black, the asphalt. Yeah. The black, black um, right. asphalt. Right. Which you always get potholes in our neighborhood. Right. If it rains, pothole city. It's like bang, 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 bang. Yeah, like sinkholes all over the street. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> but I love, I love the the architecture. I love all the old stuff. I was kind of thinking like this is one of the oldest cities in the country. Yeah. Um, if not the oldest, I, I don't, I don't know. Oh, well, it's one of the oldest. But I mean, like if you're walking through the streets, like really pay attention to the architecture. Of course. And pay attention to the churches. Yes, I did take lots of photos and videos of churches. I have my GoPro. I went through two batteries yesterday. Um, I brought my GoPro with me today. It's in my bag. Yeah. And um, I like to videotape everything I can. I walk around and um, I saw sticking it outside the bus, like as the bus is going by, watching out for trees and stuff and, and all that from the top deck. But I find that stuff very fascinating and like location sets. Like I think I saw the church I was in Ghostbusters that the Safe Puff stepped on as he tried climbing the. <laughs> I think I saw that church. Like that looks like that church. Um, and of course the the library the, the library the museum they had that was in the movie beginning of the movie with with the lines in front of it. Is that the museum? I think maybe it's a library. You know what I'm talking about the lines in front. Yeah, the library. The That's library. Li yeah, we drove library. by that. We drove by that and. Um, I still want to find the fire fire house that the Ghostbusters thing was set. I don't know where that is. Is it in there? Is it somewhere around? I think there? it might be. Or is it and knocked over? I don't. I don't. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Come on now, you're from New York. Right? You should know these things. <laughs> See, the problem with being from New York, okay, and I'll tell everybody this is that true New Yorkers don't go to New York City if they can like prevent it. Okay, like um, the whole ball drop in New York City on New Year's New York City like New Yorkers don't go to that <laughs> I heard I heard that once you're in that area you can't leave right and it's like 50 bucks a slice of pizza or something crazy amount of money because you can't go you can't st you gotta eat what are you gonna do and all yeah. that um, it's it's ridiculous like I don't want to do it. it's cold do, do you know? know what a stadium pal is no a stadium pal is a little bag that attaches to the side of your thigh. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. Get out of here with that. And you pee into it so you don't have to get off the line. I think it's something the Raiders do when they're in their Raiders stadium. <laughs> to use the bathroom, <laughs> yeah. right. You know, so. That's just nuts. That's just gross. I mean, you got, you got right. porta potties. My gosh. <laughs> you know, are we heathens here? Come on. Because you don't want to lose your spot. You uh, know? I, 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 I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. But that's where we were staying at in that area. Get to see all that stuff. I saw the ball. The ball's still there. It's halfway dropped. So I don't know how they. You know, does it drop all year or something? Or is I it? I don't think so. Oh, well, <laughs> well, maybe some. Are you looking up. at a different ball? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We saw that uh, strip club down the street, but uh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, the, the the ball, the ball is it's halfway down there. You can see it and stuff. And he saw um all the usual Times Square, like all the all the usual tourist spots. We saw. I think it's great. This place is great. This whole tour, this whole trip has been fantastic. This is, yeah. uh, this is this is a different vibe. It's so full of history. It, I love the history. I really appreciate the history. I love all that stuff. Um, we have not ridden a subway since we've been here. I don't think we are because Christine's like, eh, she never really wants to ride the subway. You know, I heard you got to do it at least once. You know what? I want to see a subway sandwich place on the subway. Do they have those? Maybe in Port Authority. That'd be like ironic on another level. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I mean, it's funny. I see the sign for Subway. Oh, they got Subway here. 
And, and like, yeah, they have Subway everywhere. But I, thought, I, thought it was, I thought it was a sandwich place. That's why I, I saw. I saw yeah. the, that's why. I, well, no, I saw, but it was for the Subway. Subway. It was. Oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Well. That's my stupidity. You know, yeah. thinking it was for for something else. But um, yeah, this place. Well, been, I'll tell you what. I'll cancel the limo from the basement surge. Oh, oh thanks. Okay, and you take the train back to the city. <laughs> okay. Wasn't well, the train the Subway the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you take the train back to the city, right? Okay. Uh, it's okay. one train. It's a D train. It goes right to where you're at. I don't know. It sounds it sounds kind of kinky. <laughs> the D train. I don't know if I got anything called a D train. <laughs> oh man! It, it, <laughs> yeah. Hey, honey, we're taking the D train. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm glad you're having a great time. Yeah. Here yeah. In the this city. has been great. You know, and um. It's it's um I thought for I thought it'd be hard for me to adjust to the time zone. It still is a little bit. Yeah. But well, that first night was great. But then like we woke up early the next day, and then like we just like hit it hard all day yesterday. Right. So we went to bed like midnight last night, which is still kind of okay. early for us because we're three hours behind. I so. usually go to bed like one a.m. Okay. What time did you wake up then? Six seven. Wow. Yeah. I don't wow. get much sleep. Wow. Wow, yeah. I don't sleep much because, you know, it's a lot of things to do here at the Surge in the basement. Oh, yeah, so, of course. So uh, I'm constantly working. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, um, I'm constantly working, working, working. Yeah. No, um, but, yeah, if I come home, like, literally, I come home from work at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, you know? Yeah. I'll have some ice cream. We watch Netflix or whatever. You have know. ice cream at 3 in the morning? Of course. Why not? Actually, funny, funny story. So I come home a Friday night. No, a Friday night. What day am I? My days are mixed up. It was uh, Wednesday night. What day is it? Wednesday. It was it was it was Wednesday night. It was when we had to catch the, catch the flight. We had to catch the flight the next day. So yeah. so it was Wednesday night. I got home from work late. I had to go to L.A. and whatever. I got home late, and then Christine texts me. She says, "I have a treat, treat for you in the refrigerator." That usually means a dessert or something or whatever. Nice. So I go in the refrigerator, and there's a box, like a cake box in there. Mm -hmm. So it says, this is for my honey on the thing, on the box. Right. I open inside. There's two big old desserts in here. Hey. It was creme brulee, a big creme brulee. Nice. Like the size of that fan on my desk there, kind of big thing. And then it had a big slice of cheesecake. And I was kind of the munchie, so I'm like, oh, okay. So I start eating both of them. And then I was like, oh, God, I ate too much. <laughs> because I was like... Oh, the next morning, tells Christine, she's like, she's like, why'd you eat both? Because you just put them in the refrigerator. I thought they were both for me. My name was on it. I thought you wanted me to eat both of them. No, I said, eat one. Maybe eat one the next day. I said, well, I said honey, we're leaving town. You're not going to keep you know, some in the refrigerator. I could, you know, be gone. <laughs> so I ate them both. But um, but ice cream is like my kryptonite, man. Let me tell you, like after work, I'll get what like. What flavor is your favorite? Oh, um, whatever's on sale. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of what I go with, but um, but I go to Ben and Jerry's, but I'm trying to stick away, stay away from all the chocolatey ones. I'm trying to go more for like the lighter ones, you know. Okay. Like puddings and cream and like caramel type of stuff. And uh, I love Rocky Road. Rock. Well, I've done Rocky Road. If you tried like the Netflix and Chillard, whatever ones they got, like the um, what's the other one? Like the Chubby Hubby, right? You know those ones and things like those are kind of similar to Rocky without the marshmallows. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I I I usually do that at, at, after work. I'll pass out on the couch sometimes. Like, oh, crap, I go to bed. And then pass I, out from an ice cream coma. Pretty, pretty yeah. much. And then, and then I'll and then I'll go to bed. You know, sneak into bed at night and then be late. And then um, I set my alarm for ten in the morning because I right. figure if I sleep past ten, I feel like I wasted the day. I but, say I say the same exact thing. No, I could do that. I, 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 I literally, guys at work, they'll like wake up at one and then get ready to go to work. That's all they do. They'll go home, shower, sleep. Wake up, maybe eat something, and go straight to work. Mm. But I can't live that way. I got to do. I got podcasting to do. I got stuff to do. You know. You got yeah. You got real work to do. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So I wake up and take care of other business. Like when I get home, I have a new client I got to meet up with and see if they want to do a podcast. Right. So so I'll do that before I go to work, and then that's why I'm like trying to crunch and get stuff done before I leave, like editing and stuff. Like oh crap, yeah. that's why I'm always late to work, like every single day, because I'm like working on the computer and I'm like. Oh, look at the clock. Oh, I got to go. I got to go. And the next thing I know, I'm like. Is your boss like always bitching? Oh, this never. guy Chris is always late to fucking work. No, like. <laughs> no. Actually, actually, my old, my old boss was, yeah. New yeah. boss, not so much. He's kind of you know, like whatever. But but the thing is, is that I can't say anything because these new guys, these other guys are coming in super early. So I was complaining. Yeah, you're coming too early. But I can't say anything. I come in late every day. So I'm kind of like, yeah. it's like give and take. So but it's not fair because you work, literally work overnights. 
Yes. You know, so, you know, coming in early doesn't. These guys do. These guys come in like, like we're start. My start time is 320. Yeah. And, and several guys are showing there at two o'clock or two thirty, mm. and they figure if the if the truck is there ready to go and and, and the dispatch sent down the work for us to do already, mm-hmm. then they'll jump on and get started early. And they'll get done by like midnight or whatever, you know. And they love they love doing that. And the same thing for day shift, which I think is nuts because day shift guys come in at like three in the morning. The guy the guy I share a truck with, same start time as me, three twenty, and but he's either he's there like at two thirty. Wow, why is day shift coming in so early? They I used to work day shift too, and it, that's it's, three, it's like three to three. Like ours, the start time is three. Their start time is three. Twelve hours. Twelve shift. hour shift. Twelve hour shift. Well, it's actually a ten hour shift, but they give us twelve. That's how they do it, though. We don't. I mean, we we leave when we're done. Yeah. But the next crew comes in twelve hours later. So. so if you get your if you get your stuff unloaded like faster, yes, you could be off. Like earlier some of the guys do that yes they cut corners yes they get in trouble yes because it's, there's a, the more you cut corners with anything in life sure you're gonna screw up you're gonna screw something up of course it's like you're speeding catching corners running out of lights whatever you're gonna get screwed up or something you know yeah. so um and of course it's like anything the more you do it the better you get and the quicker you get and things like that when you're brand new doing this kind of stuff it just takes forever you're, you're running all those 12 hours you know yeah. but the more times you do it and, and the quicker you get it and it depends on the day some days are lighter some days are heavier and then you get done earlier or you can take your time like i do sometimes i'll take my time you know and, and get my 10 or 12 hours overtime so overtime for us is anything after 10 because we're on a four-day work week okay so it's four tens so anything after the 10th hour is the overtime yeah um, a lot of guys work overtime a fifth day or a sixth day i used to do that all the time five days a week so i work my regular four and then a fifth overtime day. A lot of guys do that, and that's all overtime for that day. Um, that's how you make your money, really. Yeah. In, my, in my business, I these guys make so much money doing that, working five, six days a week, wow. year round. But I got podcasting, dude. Man, I got time for that. You, you know? have important things to do. That's man. right. I don't, you know, can be play, <laughs> playing around with, uh, you know, with with the uh, work and you know a, a real job. You know. I got, <laughs> so, so how how long now are you staying here in, in New York? Uh, I think we're leaving Monday, Monday You're, night. Okay. Monday, it's funny. Monday night, and I work Tuesday night, so I, I'm flying home Monday night. Oh wow! And then, but it's okay. It, it probably helped me get back into my regular scheme of things. But I got a, a, a meeting at 11 a.m. with a new client Tuesday uh, through Zoom. So. I'll be okay. up for it. I'll be up for it. I'll be take some notes and see what he wants to do and stuff. Talk to this guy and then um, All right. hopefully make a podcast for him and then uh, on to the next. But but I was going to try sending out. I'm trying to I'm trying to build my LinkedIn profile list. I'm connecting with like anybody that LinkedIn suggests I should connect with. I didn't connect with everybody, you know. Sure. Yeah. And then and then a lot of them, some written me back. Like the one guy wrote me back, but never got back to me. But doing a podcast, but. But I think it's where this guy found me was on LinkedIn. And so once I get back and back into the grind of things, I'm going to start just hitting these people up and saying, hey, you need a show, you need a show, you need a show, and just go and work on the list and to see. But I wasn't nice. going to do much of anything until I got back from vacation. Right. Because you can't do much while you're traveling. And, and Yeah, I mean, it's harder. You yeah, know, I mean, it, I got the laptop. What am I going to do with that? I can't. Yeah. I, you know, I, mean, I can do a few things. But um, like when I record my client's show, I, I record on the Roadcaster. And I record through Clean Feed, and I got double recording so that just in case um, Clean Feed or something crashes. But I mean, if you cra- if, it, if it crashes, we're all dead anyway. So like I, you know. So if anybody who's wondering what Chris does at Podtastic, Podtastic Audio, okay, like Chris is like the producer that you need for your show. Okay, so if you're if you're thinking about starting a podcast or if you want to start a podcast for your maybe a company, a business, okay, and you want to educate your employees on certain things within the business, or if you just want to get the word out for your business, you know, Chris is the one stop shop for podcast producing, okay? Like all you need to do is just show up <laughs> to the session and Chris records everything. He puts it out. He like he does. He fixes it up. Like it's it's amazing what this guy can do with audio. And uh, yeah, I could I always say I can take bad audio and make it sound decent. I can make decent audio sound good, and I make good audio sound great. But I can't make garbage sound amazing. So <laughs> keep that in mind. 
<laughs> you know, I'm not a magician here. You know? Right, right, right. You know, yeah. so uh, so if you're thinking about starting a podcast, do me a favor. Uh, links are down below in the show notes uh, for Podtastic Audio. The ad in in the beginning of this episode was probably for Podtastic Audio. The ad in thank the you. mid roll was probably for Podtastic Audio. Well, thank you. That's why I paid the bucks right <laughs> now. Okay, so head on over to PodtasticAudio.com uh, and hit him up and uh, get your podcast started today. That's right. Yeah, Chris, like I can't thank you enough for stopping by, like in studio. Yeah, this is great. You know, this is my second in in person studio appearance I've made. In my podcasting career, and this is the best of the two. Awesome, <laughs> sweet, we're winning. That's right, that's right. <laughs> the basement surge is winning. Awesome, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> All right, everybody, uh, go follow Chris over on podtasticaudio.com, and uh, his podcast is available on all major podcast listening apps. Um, you know, he, he puts out a great show. How to, he teaches you how to podcast, he teaches you how to you know market your show and basically, yeah, basically fix your show up. it's like it's like teaching you like which end of a microphone to use yeah, yeah let's work on that first and then yeah it's not, <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not this time yeah. <laughs> well that's that's, that's like that's like step one you know yeah, let's yeah, go yeah. from there we'll figure it out from there right but uh you know hook up with him if uh if you want to know the real way of starting a podcast especially for a business it's awesome um as far as the basement surge is concerned, okay, everybody, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button, give us a thumbs up, hit ring that bell, hit the follow button, <laughs> hit the plus button, hit whatever button you gotta hit. And don't worry about those videos next to you. Don't worry about those things. Yeah. Hit whatever button you gotta hit to make sure you get notified of fresh episodes of the basement surge. We drop new podcast episodes uh, every Tuesday on every single podcast platform and YouTube, so go check it out. Hit that subscribe button. Um, I want to say in the next couple of weeks for the surge, I kind of don't want to give away anything that's going to happen. Okay, Good. so Good. I don't I don't want to tease anything. Good. Is something but happening? Something's happening? Something, something big's happening. Whoa. Something. Whoa. Something, something Whoa. Huge. Blew your mind. <laughs> something huge. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Can't wait. My wife, Heather, comes out with Basement Ladies every Tuesday at 9 p.m. It's a live show. Go check it out. Hit that follow button. Hey, who's the other ladies on the ladies show? It's whoever she wants it to I be. I asked to be on that show. I said, you, but I'm not a lady. So I said, is it cool? Is it cool? Yeah, I, it's cool. Because I'm not a lady, so I don't know how it works out. It's fine. Okay. You know, it, because a lot of the topics she talks about, like sometimes she'll talk, she'll ask about the male perspective. You know about the dad perspective, about okay, okay, the guy okay. perspective. You okay, know, okay. Thing, how how, how to like, bring your kid's neck when they do something? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, like a lot of the topics she talks about on that show, you know, it's it's kind of like, all right, well, how would the dads react? You know, how yes. would the husbands react? Perfect. So go check it out. Uh, it, she goes live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Facebook and YouTube. So uh, go subscribe. Uh. Yes. Tell me, buddy. It's your, it's your basement. What am I? What am I promoting? <laughs> well, good times and good vibes. Yeah, good times and good vibes. Um, I I am also a uh, one of the stars on Cameo on the Cameo platform. Okay, you can request me to break up with your girlfriend, to say happy birthday to somebody. What? Yes. How, does, how does this work? On Cameo. What's, on ca the what's Cameo? It's an app. It's a it's a platform that allows people like you to hire professionals and celebrities. Oh yeah. To say specific things like "Happy Birthday." I'm sorry, it's just not working out right now. We need to break up. I but don't when, love when, you when, anymore. But when you know that, that <laughs> okay. it's not your voice, it's like like hey. Well, no, no. Hey, like Jay they, Jill. John says see that that you know uh, uh, he doesn't want to be with you anymore, and and this is uh, John. So. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is John from the Basement Surge. Uh, Kevin from, you know, uh, Rhode Island doesn't want to be with you anymore. I'm sorry, Lisa. You know, like people actually pay money to do that, huh? <laughs> right? What a trip! Wow. So I am on Cameo. You can go on the platform, check it out. Link is down below. 
Uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight, everybody. Everything about the links, uh, everything about what we spoke about today uh, is down in the links below in the show notes. So go check it out. Chris, thank you very much for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. This is quite a treat, quite a pleasure. What a way and hike to get all the way over here. <laughs> Dude. I'll make sure the limo comes back around. You sure do. And chill, chill champagne and ice, please. Thank that, you. I'll make sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Let's, Let's go. go. Turn up the volume. The volume. From the basement of the Empire State, this is the Basement Surge. Three, two, one.